How to Grow Tomatoes, a Comprehensive Guide Growing tomatoes can be a rewarding experience for any gardener. But it can be intimidating and overwhelming for beginners. But worry not, this article will guide you through the entire process of GR. Wing Tomatoes, from selecting the right variety to harvesting and preserving your bounty. Wing tomatoes, from selecting the right variety to harvesting and preserving your bounty. 1. Choose the right tomato variety. There are dozens of tomato varieties available in the market, each with its unique taste, size, and growing requirements. So, the first step in growing tomatoes is selecting the right variety. Before buying the seeds, Consider the following factors. Climate, different tomato varieties require different growing conditions. For instance, if you live in a hot and humid climate, you should opt for heat-tolerant varieties such as Celebrity, Heat Wave. 2. And Solar Fire. If you live in a cooler climate, choose cool weather varieties such as Glacier, Early Girl, and Stupus. 2. And Solar Fire. If you live in a cooler climate, choose cool weather varieties such as Glacier, Early Girl, and Stupus. Usage. Tomatoes come in various sizes and shapes, and each has a different taste and texture. If you plan to use your tomatoes in salads, choose cherry or grape tomatoes. For making sauces and can. D. Tomatoes. Up for the beefsteak or Roma tomatoes. D tomatoes, up for the beefsteak or Roma tomatoes. Disease resistance, tomatoes are susceptible to various diseases, such as blight, wilts, and viruses. To avoid these diseases, choose a variety that is resistant to them. You can find this in format. On on the seed packet or from your local nursery. On on the seed packet or from your local nursery. 2. Prepare the soil. Tomato plants require well drained, fertile soil with a pH level of 6.0 to 7.0. Before planting, amend your soil with organic matter such as compost well-rotted manure or peat moss. This will impro. E-soil fertility, aeration, and drainage. E-soil fertility, aeration, and drainage. If your soil is acidic, add lime to increase the pH level. If it is alkaline, add sulfur to lower the pH level. You can get your soil tested to determine its pH level and nutrient content. 3. Plant the tomatoes. Tomatoes can be grown either from seeds or transplants. Transplants are small plants that have been started indoors and are ready to be planted in the garden. They are preferred by most gardeners as Hay provide an early harvest. Hay provide an early harvest. To plant tomatoes, follow the below steps. Choose a sunny spot in your garden that receives at least 6 to 8 hours of direct sunlight per day. Dig a hole that is slightly wider and deeper than the root ball of the plant. Add a tablespoon of slow-release fertilizer in the hole and mix it with the soil. Gently remove the tomato plant from its container, loosen the root ball, and place it in the hole. Fill the hole with soil, pressing it gently around the plant. Water the plant thoroughly to settle the soil around the roots. 
space each planned at least two feet apart to allow room for growth and adequate air circulation. 4. Support the tomatoes Tomato plants are prone to falling over due to their weight and the wind. Supporting the plants with stakes or cages will prevent them from breaking and reduce the risk of disease. Stakes are long wooden or metal poles that are driven into the ground near the tomato plant. Tie the plant to the stake using soft twine or garden tape. Cages, on the other hand, are round or square. Eagle frames that surround the plant. Eagle frames that surround the plant. They are beneficial as the plant grows through the cage, and the leaves and fruits remain off the ground, reducing contact with pests and disease. 5. Water and Fertilize Tomatoes require consistent watering to keep the soil evenly moist. Water the plants deeply once or twice a week, depending on the weather conditions. Avoid watering the foliage as it can increase th. Risk of disease Risk of disease Fertilize the plants with a balanced fertilizer such as October 10, 2010, once every three weeks after planting. Alternatively, you can use organic fertilizers, such as compost tea or fish emulsion. These fertilizers release nutrients slowly and improve soil health. 6. Prune the tomatoes Tomatoes produce more fruit when they receive adequate sunlight and air circulation. Pruning the plants can promote these conditions, leading to healthier plants and higher yields. To prune tomatoes, follow these steps. Pinch off the suckers. Suckers are the small growths that emerge from the area where a leaf joins the stem. Pinch them off when they are 2 to 3 inches long. Removing suckers redirects the plants in her. Why do the formation of flowers and fruits? Why do the formation of flowers and fruits? Remove the lower branches. Removing the lower branches encourages the plant to focus its energy on the upper branches where the fruits are growing. Support the main stem, keep the main stem tied to the stake or cage to prevent it from breaking under the weight of the fruits. 7. Harvest and preserve the tomatoes Tomatoes are ready to be harvested when they are firm, fully colored, and have a slight give when squeezed. Depending on the variety, tomatoes can take anywhere from 50 to 100 days to mature. To harvest, gently twist the fruit off the vine. Tomatoes that are left on the vine too long can become overripe and lose their flavor. If you have more tomatoes than you can use fresh, consider preserving them. You can preserve tomatoes in various ways, such as canning, freezing, or dehydrating. Remember to provide adequate support to your plants, water and fertilize regularly, and prune them when necessary. And once your tomatoes are ready to be harvested, enjoy them fresh or preserve them. Or later use. With these tips and guidelines, you're set to start your tomato growing journey and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Or later use. With these tips and guidelines, you're set to start your tomato growing journey and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Common mistakes to avoid when growing vegetables Growing vegetables is a fun and rewarding activity that can bring joy and health benefits to your life. However, even experienced gardeners can make mistakes that can reduce the quality and quantity. 
F. Their Harvest. In this article, we will cover common mistakes to avoid when growing vegetables, so that you can get the most out of your garden and enjoy a bountiful harvest. F. Their Harvest. In this article, we will cover common mistakes to avoid when growing vegetables, so that you can get the most out of your garden and enjoy a bountiful harvest. 1. Not planning your vegetable garden. One of the most common mistakes that many gardeners make is not planning their vegetable garden properly. It is essential to determine the best location for your garden, the right time to plant each. Rob, and how much space each vegetable needs to grow correctly. Rob, and how much space each vegetable needs to grow correctly. Before planting, you should consider the soil conditions, the amount of sunlight, and the average temperatures in your area. Certain crops like tomatoes and peppers need full sun to thrive, while off. RS like lettuce and spinach prefer cooler temperatures and partial shade. RS like lettuce and spinach prefer cooler temperatures and partial shade. You should also ensure that you have enough space for your vegetables to grow and avoid overcrowding, which can lead to poor growth and increased risk of disease. Additionally, you should plan your Arden to allow for crop rotation, which can prevent soil depletion and increase plant health. Arden to allow for crop rotation, which can prevent soil depletion and increase plant health. 2. Not testing the soil. The quality of your soil can significantly impact the growth and health of your vegetables. Soil testing can help you identify any nutrient deficiencies or pH imbalances in your soil which can hinder. Plant growth. Many garden centers can test soil samples for a small fee, or you can purchase soil testing kits online or at your local garden store. Plant growth. Many garden centers can test soil samples for a small fee or you can purchase soil testing kits online or at your local garden store. Once you know the nutritional content of your soil, you can make informed decisions about what fertilizers and amendments to add to your garden. Organic compost, manure, and mulch are often excellent. Choices to boost soil fertility and increase soil moisture retention Choices to boost soil fertility and increase soil moisture retention. 3. Over or underwatering your vegetables. Watering is an essential part of growing healthy vegetables. Overwatering or underwatering can harm roots, affect nutrient absorption, and increase the risk of disease. Proper watering is crucial for Your plants, and the amount of water required can vary depending on the type of crop, the soil type, and the environment. Your plants, and the amount of water required can vary depending on the type of crop, the soil type, and the environment. Water your plants deeply and regularly, ideally in the early morning or late evening, to allow for proper absorption and minimize evaporation. A moisture meter can help you determine the right time t. Water and watering cans or drip irrigation systems can help you regulate the amount of water your plants receive. Water and watering cans or drip irrigation systems can help you regulate the amount of water your plants receive. 4. Not using the right fertilizer or too much fertilizer. Using the right fertilizer can make or break the growth of your plants. However, the type of fertilizer needed can vary depending on the soil type, the stage of growth, and the type of vegetable. Ove. 
fertilization can lead to stunted growth, reduced fruiting, or even death of your plants. On the other hand, under-fertilization can also hinder growth and reduce yield. Fertilization can lead to stunted growth, reduced fruiting, or even death of your plants. On the other hand, under-fertilization can also hinder growth and reduce yield. Organic fertilizers, such as compost or manure, are great for improving soil quality and adding necessary nutrients to your garden. However, it's important to ensure that you don't add too much or too. Little fertilizer. It's a good idea to read the instructions on the fertilizer package and follow the recommended dosage. Also, ensure that you fertilize at the correct time during the growth cycle. Little fertilizer. It's a good idea to read the instructions on the fertilizer package and follow the recommended dosage. Also, ensure that you fertilize at the correct time during the growth cycle. F your plants. 5. Planting vegetables in the wrong place. Planting your vegetables in the wrong place can lead to poor growth. Different vegetables have different light and soil requirements, and planting them in the wrong place can lead to poor growth. Red. Said yield, or even death of plants. Said yield, or even death of plants. For example, root vegetables like carrots and radishes require loose soil and full sunlight for optimal growth. Fruiting vegetables like tomatoes and peppers require a lot of sunlight to thrive. Shad Loving vegetables like lettuce and spinach, on the other hand, prefer cooler temperatures and partial shade. Loving vegetables like lettuce and spinach, on the other hand, prefer cooler temperatures and partial shade. 6. Not controlling pests and diseases Pests and diseases can wreak havoc on your vegetable garden. Common garden pests include aphids, slugs, and snails, while diseases like powdery mildew and blight can affect the growth and yield of yo. Our plants. Regular inspection and early detection are the keys to controlling pests and diseases. Our plants. Regular inspection and early detection are the keys to controlling pests and diseases. Using natural pest control methods such as companion planting, releasing beneficial insects, or using organic pesticides can help reduce the impact of pests without harming your plants or the environment. And additionally, it's important to practice good garden hygiene, such as cleaning up dead leaves and debris, to reduce the risk of disease. And additionally, it's important to practice good garden hygiene, such as cleaning up dead leaves and debris, to reduce the risk of disease. 7. Not harvesting your vegetables on time. Harvesting your vegetables at the right time is essential to ensuring the quality and flavor of your crops. Each vegetable has a different harvest time, and waiting too long can result in overripe tea. Uck, or tasteless produce. Conversely, harvesting too early can result in underripe or immature crops that lack flavor or nutrition. Uck, or tasteless produce. Conversely, Harvesting too early can result in underripe or immature crops that lack flavor or nutrition. Be sure to consult the seed packet or a reputable gardening guide to determine the ideal time to harvest your vegetables. For example, tomatoes should be harvested when they are fully red and slight. Soft, while zucchini and cucumbers should be harvested while they are still small and tender. Soft, while zucchini and cucumbers should be harvested while they are still small and tender. In addition to these common mistakes, 
there are a few other tips that can help you maximize the productivity of your vegetable garden. One tip is to start your plants from seeds rather than buying say. Dullings from a store. Starting your plants from seeds allows you to control the growth process and ensures that your plants are healthy from the beginning. Dullings from a store. Starting your plants from seeds allows you to control the growth process and ensures that your plants are healthy from the beginning. How to market your tropical agricultural products. Marketing tropical agricultural products can be a challenge, but with the right strategies, it can be profitable. There are several factors that must be taken into consideration when marketing these. Products, including identifying your target market, finding a reliable distribution channel, and developing a strong marketing message. In this article, we will outline some effective marketing straight. Products, including identifying your target market, finding a reliable distribution channel, and developing a strong marketing message. In this article, we will outline some effective marketing straight. IEs for Tropical Agricultural Products 1. Identify your target market the first step in marketing your tropical agricultural products is to identify your target market. This will help you determine the best marketing channels to use and how to create a message that reads. Nadies with your intended audience. Nadies with your intended audience. Knowing your target market will require you to conduct research to understand their needs and preferences. You will want to look at things like demographic data, buying habits, and consumer behavior. For example, if you are selling tropical fruits, you may want to target health enthusiasts or people who are concerned about eating a balanced diet. For example, if you are selling tropical fruits, you may want to target health enthusiasts or people who are concerned about eating a balanced diet. Identifying your target market will also help you develop a pricing strategy that is reasonable for your intended audience. 2. Find reliable distribution channels Once you have identified your target market, you will need to find a distribution channel to get your products to them. This could be through a wholesaler or a retailer, or you may choose to sell you. Products directly to consumers through a farmer's market or online marketplace. Products directly to consumers through a farmer's market or online marketplace. It is important to find a reliable distribution channel that will ensure your products reach your intended audience in a timely and efficient manner. You will want to consider factors like the cost O. Shipping, packaging requirements and any regulations around the transportation of agricultural products. Shipping, packaging requirements, and any regulations around the transportation of agricultural products. Another option to consider is partnering with a local distributor who already has established relationships with retailers in your target market. This can take some of the legwork out of establishing your own distribution channels and give you access to new customers. Your own distribution channels and give you access to new customers. 3. Develop a strong marketing message. Once you have identified your target market and found a distribution channel, you will need to develop a strong marketing message that resonates with your intended audience. Your marketing message should highlight the benefits of your tropical agricultural products and why customers should choose them over alternatives. This may include things like the environmental cyst. Inability of your products, the superior flavor or nutritional value, or the fact that they are locally sourced. Inability of your products, 
the superior flavor or nutritional value, or the fact that they are locally sourced. It is important to make sure your marketing message is clear, concise, and memorable. Consider creating a slogan or tagline that sums up your message in a few words. 4. Use digital marketing strategies. In today's digital age, it is essential to have an online presence for your tropical agricultural products. This can include creating a website or social media accounts where you can engage with CUST. MERS and showcase your products. MERS and showcase your products. Make sure your website and social media accounts are easy to navigate and visually appealing. Use high-quality images and videos to showcase your products and provide information on how they are grow. And harvest it. And harvest it. Consider using paid advertising on social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram to reach a wider audience. You can target your ads to specific demographics and geographic locations to ensure TH. Why reach your target market? Why reach your target market? 5. Attend trade shows and farmers markets. Attending trade shows and farmers markets can be a great way to showcase your tropical agricultural products and connect with potential customers. This gives you the opportunity to interact with CUS. Omers face-to-face and provide samples of your products. Omers face-to-face and provide samples of your products. Trade shows and farmers markets can also help you build relationships with other vendors and distributors in your industry. This can lead to partnerships or collaborations that could expand your RIA. H and increase sales. H and increase sales. 6. Offer promotions and discounts. Offering promotions and discounts is a great way to encourage customers to try your tropical agricultural products. This could include offering a discount on their first purchase, creating a loyalty. Regram, or running a promotional campaign around a specific holiday or event. Regram, or running a promotional campaign around a specific holiday or event. Make sure your promotions and discounts are relevant to your target market and align with your overall marketing message. For example, if your target market is health enthusiasts, consider offering a discount on a bundle of your healthiest products. Discount on a bundle of your healthiest products. 7. Focus on sustainability and traceability. Consumers are increasingly concerned about the sustainability and traceability of the products they buy. This is particularly important in the agricultural industry, where consumers are increasingly interested in buying local and supporting environmentally sustainable practices. Interested in buying local and supporting environmentally sustainable practices. Consider highlighting the sustainable and traceable practices you use to grow and harvest your tropical agricultural products. This could include using eco-friendly packaging, reducing waste in your reduction process, or partnering with sustainable farming organizations. Reduction process, or partnering with sustainable farming organizations. Introduction to Tropical Agriculture Tropical agriculture is a branch of farming that deals with crops and livestock that are suited for tropical regions of the world. These regions typically have a hot and humid climate, with an AVRAG temperature of above 18 degrees Celsius. 
This type of agriculture is critical for the survival of millions of people in tropical regions who rely on agriculture for livelihoods, food security, and economic develo. Temperature of above 18 degrees Celsius. This type of agriculture is critical for the survival of millions of people in tropical regions who rely on agriculture for livelihoods, food security, and economic develo. Vent The History of Tropical Agriculture Tropical agriculture has been a critical aspect of human civilization for thousands of years. Historically, some of the earliest forms of tropical agriculture were practiced in ancient civilizations. Such as the Maya, Inca, and Aztec. These civilizations cultivated crops like maize, potatoes, and beans, and developed sophisticated irrigation systems to manage water resources. Such as the Maya, Inca, and Aztec. These civilizations cultivated crops like maize, potatoes, and beans, and developed sophisticated irrigation systems to manage water resources. During the colonial era, European powers expanded their territories into tropical regions of the world, including Africa, Asia, and Latin America. They established plantation economies which focused and monoculture production of crops like sugar, coffee, and rubber for export to Europe. These plantations operated using forced labor, which led to the exploitation of millions of people. and monoculture production of crops like sugar, coffee, and rubber for export to Europe. These plantations operated using forced labor, which led to the exploitation of millions of people. Today, tropical agriculture has moved beyond large-scale plantation agriculture toward smaller, more sustainable family farming. Despite this, agriculture still plays a critical role in the economy. F. Tropical regions. More than 60% of the world's uncultivated arable land is located in tropical regions, providing opportunities for its expansion. F. Tropical regions. More than 60% of the world's uncultivated arable land is located in tropical regions, providing opportunities for its expansion. Challenges facing tropical agriculture. Tropical agriculture faces several challenges, including the effects of climate change, soil degradation, and the spread of pests and diseases. Climate change and its associated impacts, such as Drew. HTS and floods can have severe impacts on crops and livestock. Soil degradation can lead to lower crop yields and less fertile land. Pests and diseases can devastate crops and cause significant econ. HTS and floods can have severe impacts on crops and livestock. Soil degradation can lead to lower crop yields and less fertile land. Pests and diseases can devastate crops and cause significant econ. Mic damage to farming communities. Research and development. To address these challenges, Significant investments have been made in tropical agriculture research and development. International organizations, such as the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the International Rice Research Institute, and the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, have made significant contributions to the development of new farming methods in P. United Nations, the International Rice Research Institute, and the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, have made significant contributions to the development of new farming methods in P. Actuses For example, the use of genetically modified crops has been a controversial topic in tropical agriculture research and development. Some people argue that genetic modification can lead to problems soon. H is glyphosate resistance, while others believe it can help increase yields, reduce the use of pesticides, and improve food security. 
H is glyphosate resistance, while others believe it can help increase yields, reduce the use of pesticides and improve food security. Sustainable Agriculture in the Tropics Sustainable agriculture is an essential aspect of tropical agriculture. Sustainable agriculture aims to produce food while preserving the environment and natural resources. It also addresses food second. Ready concerns and promotes social and economic well-being in farming communities. Ready concerns and promotes social and economic well-being in farming communities. There are several sustainable agriculture practices that can be applied in tropical regions. Some of these include 1. Agroforestry. This is a practice that involves planting trees and crops together to create a more diverse and sustainable farming system. Trees provide shade for crops, reduce soil erosion and he. P to increase soil fertility. P to increase soil fertility. 2. Crop rotation. This practice involves rotating crops on the same land, which helps to improve soil fertility and reduce soil erosion. Crop rotation also helps to reduce the buildup of pests and D. Ceases. Ceases. 3. Conservation tillage, this involves reducing the amount of tillage used in crop production. Conservation tillage helps to reduce soil erosion and improve soil health. 4. Integrated Pest Management, IPM, this is a practice that involves the use of a combination of different pest management strategies to control pests. It aims to reduce the use of pesticides while Maintaining Crop Productivity Maintaining crop productivity. In addition to these sustainable agriculture practices, several other initiatives are being undertaken to improve tropical agriculture, such as 1. Research on climate change adaptation. This seeks to identify ways that farmers can adapt to the impacts of climate change, such as droughts, floods, and changing weather patterns. 2. Capacity building, this involves providing education and training to farmers on sustainable farming practices and other related issues. 3. Sustainable land management, SLM, this involves applying a range of practices to reduce land degradation, restore degraded lands, and improve the productivity of cropping systems. In recent years, there has been a growing interest in sustainable agriculture practices in tropical regions, driven in part by concerns over climate change and environmental degradation. While sustain. Able agriculture is not a new concept, the focus on it has increased in response to the growing global demand for food and the recognition that traditional agricultural practices are not always sista. Able agriculture is not a new concept, the focus on it has increased in response to the growing global demand for food and the recognition that traditional agricultural practices are not always sista. Nable in the long term The adoption of sustainable agriculture practices in tropical regions is particularly important because these areas are often vulnerable to climate change impacts such as increased frequency or intent. Idy of storms, droughts, and floods. These impacts can lead to reduced crop yields, increased soil erosion, and other environmental and social problems. Therefore, it is becoming increasingly important. Idy of storms, droughts, and floods. These impacts can lead to reduced crop yields, increased soil erosion, and other environmental and social problems. Therefore, it is becoming increasingly important. T to develop sustainable agricultural practices that can adapt to changing conditions, while also providing food security and livelihoods for people in these regions. 
An important aspect of sustainable agriculture in the tropics is the use of agroforestry, which involves planting trees and crops together. Agroforestry can provide many benefits, including improved. Oil health, increased crop yields, and greater biodiversity. Trees and agroforestry systems can also provide shade that helps to cool the environment, reducing the stress on crops during hot weather. Oil health, increased crop yields, and greater biodiversity. Trees and agroforestry systems can also provide shade that helps to cool the environment, reducing the stress on crops during hot weather. His practice has become increasingly popular in recent years, and it has been estimated that nearly 40 million hectares of land are currently being used for agroforestry worldwide. Another important element of sustainable agriculture in the tropics is crop rotation. Crop rotation involves alternating crops on the same land, which helps to maintain soil health and fertility. T. Managing Soil Erosion in Tropical Agriculture Managing Soil Erosion in Tropical Agriculture Soil erosion is a natural process that occurs in all landscapes, but it can be exacerbated by human activities such as agriculture. It is estimated that up to 40% of agricultural land is affected by erosion worldwide with tropical regions experiencing some of the highest rates of soil erosion. Managing soil erosion in tropical agriculture is crucial to maintain soil productivity and prevent vert. Erosion worldwide, with tropical regions experiencing some of the highest rates of soil erosion. Managing soil erosion in tropical agriculture is crucial to maintain soil productivity and prevent vert. Or environmental degradation. Soil erosion is the process by which soil is moved from one location to another by wind or water. In agriculture, soil erosion is often caused by the removal of vegetation cover, intensive tillage PR. This is, and the use of heavy machinery. Tropical agriculture is particularly vulnerable to soil erosion due to the combination of high rainfall, steep slopes, and the degradation of soil structure. This is, and the use of heavy machinery. Tropical agriculture is particularly vulnerable to soil erosion due to the combination of high rainfall, steep slopes, and the degradation of soil structure. Soil erosion leads to significant environmental and economic costs. Eroded soil reduces soil quality, leading to lower crop yields and reduced productivity. Soil erosion also causes sedimentation of Adderways, impacting water quality and aquatic ecosystems. Finally, soil erosion contributes to climate change through the release of carbon stored in the soil. Adderways, impacting water quality and aquatic ecosystems. Finally, soil erosion contributes to climate change through the release of carbon stored in the soil. The management of soil erosion in tropical agriculture involves a combination of physical, agronomic, and biological practices. These practices aim to reduce soil erosion by minimizing the impact of rainfall and wind, improving soil quality, and maintaining vegetative cover. Rainfall and wind, improving soil quality, and maintaining vegetative cover. Physical practices involve the construction of physical barriers to reduce the force of rainfall and wind. Terracing is a common practice in tropical regions, in which fields are leveled into steps t. Slow down the movement of water and soil. Other physical practices include the use of contour plowing, which involves plowing along the contours of the land to reduce soil movement, and the construct. Slow down the movement of water and soil. Other physical practices include the use of contour plowing, which involves plowing along the contours of the land to reduce soil movement, and the construct. Ion of retention ponds, which collect and store water to reduce runoff. Agronomic practices refer to the manipulation of soil and crop management practices to improve soil quality and reduce soil erosion. 
The use of cover crops is a common practice in tropical agriculture. In which non-cash crops are grown to protect the soil and improve soil quality. Other agronomic practices include minimum tillage, using crop rotations, and applying organic matter. In which non-cash crops are grown to protect the soil and improve soil quality. Other agronomic practices include minimum tillage, using crop rotations, and applying organic matter. Biological practices involve the use of biological organisms to improve soil quality and reduce soil erosion. The use of trees, for example, can improve soil structure and enhance the infiltration of rainfall. Trees also provide shade, reducing the impact of direct sunlight on the soil and reducing soil temperatures. The use of livestock, such as cattle and goats, can also help manage soil erosio. Rainfall. Trees also provide shade, reducing the impact of direct sunlight on the soil and reducing soil temperatures. The use of livestock, such as cattle and goats, can also help manage soil erosio. By improving the overall quality of soil. In managing soil erosion in tropical agriculture, it is essential to address the root causes of erosion. These include both physical factors, such as rainfall and soil structure, as well as human fact. Ors, such as land use and management practices. Implementation of appropriate soil erosion management practices requires collaboration between farmers, policymakers, and other stakeholders. Ors, such as land use and management practices. Implementation of appropriate soil erosion management practices requires collaboration between farmers, policymakers, and other stakeholders. Farmers can play an active role in managing soil erosion by implementing sustainable practices on their land. These practices include reducing tillage, maintaining vegetative cover, developing FSI. NT irrigation systems, and using organic matter and compost instead of synthetic fertilizers. Farmers can also participate in training programs and workshops to learn about sustainable soil erosion M. NT irrigation systems, and using organic matter and compost instead of synthetic fertilizers. Farmers can also participate in training programs and workshops to learn about sustainable soil erosion M. Management Practices Policymakers can also contribute to the management of soil erosion in tropical agriculture through the development of policies and programs that incentivize sustainable practices. These policies can include subsidies for cover crop adoption, funding for research and education on soil erosion management, and regulations that restrict the use of harmful practices such as intensive tillage. Include subsidies for cover crop adoption, funding for research and education on soil erosion management, and regulations that restrict the use of harmful practices such as intensive tillage. Additionally, technology can also play a role in managing soil erosion in tropical agriculture. Advances in precision agriculture, for example, can help reduce the use of pesticides and fertilizers. Improving soil quality and reducing the impact of runoff on waterways. Improving soil quality and reducing the impact of runoff on waterways. Remote sensing technologies, such as satellite imagery and drones, can also be used to monitor soil erosion and identify areas that require intervention. This information can be used by farmers and p. The seamakers to make informed decisions about land use and management practices. The seamakers to make informed decisions about land use and management practices. However, it's important to note that the adoption of new technologies must be done in a way that is both socially and environmentally sustainable. It's essential to ensure that small scale farmers, W. O. make up the majority of farmers in tropical regions have access to these technologies and can use them effectively. O make up the majority of farmers in tropical regions, have access to these technologies and can use them effectively. 
Moreover, the role of education and awareness raising should not be underestimated in the management of soil erosion in tropical agriculture. Efforts should be made to educate farmers, policymakers, and other stakeholders about the importance of sustainable soil erosion management practices and their potential benefits. ND other stakeholders about the importance of sustainable soil erosion management practices and their potential benefits. Furthermore, it's essential to take a holistic approach to soil erosion management, considering not only the impacts on agricultural productivity but also the overall environmental and social consequences. For example, soil erosion can contribute to the loss of biodiversity and ecosystem services, such as water filtration and carbon sequestration. Insis. For example, soil erosion can contribute to the loss of biodiversity and ecosystem services, such as water filtration and carbon sequestration. In addition, soil erosion can have negative impacts on the livelihoods and well-being of local communities, particularly those who depend on agriculture for their livelihoods. Thus, it's critical to Involve these communities in the development and implementation of soil erosion management strategies, ensuring that their voices are heard and their needs are taken into account. Involve these communities in the development and implementation of soil erosion management strategies, ensuring that their voices are heard and their needs are taken into account. Moreover, the management of soil erosion in tropical agriculture is not a one-size-fits-all solution. The approaches and strategies used should be tailored to the specific characteristics of each land. Scape and local context. For example, in areas with high rainfall and steep slopes, terracing and contour plowing may be more effective, while in areas with lower rainfall, cover crops and organic ma. Scape and local context. For example, in areas with high rainfall and steep slopes, Terracing and contour plowing may be more effective, while in areas with lower rainfall, cover crops and organic ma. Tear may be more appropriate. Finally, international cooperation and support can play a crucial role in soil erosion management in tropical agriculture. Many small-scale farmers in tropical regions lack the necessary resources and Infrastructure to implement sustainable practices effectively. Thus, international organizations can provide financial and technical support, as well as promote knowledge sharing and capacity building. Minimizing post harvest losses in tropical crops. Minimizing post harvest losses in tropical crops. Post-harvest losses refer to the reduction in the quantity and quality of crops during storage, transportation, and processing after harvesting. These losses are a significant challenge in many devil. Ping countries, particularly in tropical regions where the climate and infrastructure are often not well suited to the storage and transportation of crops. As a result, farmers lose a significant poor. Ping countries, particularly in tropical regions where the climate and infrastructure are often not well suited to the storage and transportation of crops. As a result, farmers lose a significant poor ion of their annual harvest, which can cause significant economic and nutritional damage, both to the farmers and to the communities they serve. In this article, we will discuss some of the strategy. 1. Harvesting at the right time one of the main causes of post-harvest losses is harvesting the crop at the wrong time. Picking crops prematurely or leaving them too long in the field can lead to reduced quality and spoilage. Farm S must be aware of the right harvesting time for their crops to ensure that they are picked at optimum maturity. They should also consider the weather conditions during the harvesting period as heave. S must be aware of the right harvesting time for their crops to ensure that they are picked at optimum maturity. They should also consider the weather conditions during the harvesting period as heave. Rain or strong winds can damage the crops. 2. Sorting and grading 
Sorting and grading are essential steps in the post-harvest management of crops. Sorting involves separating the crops based on their quality, size, and physical characteristics. Grading on the oat. Hand, is the process of determining the quality of the crops based on standards set by the industry. Sorting and grading help to ensure that only high-quality crops are packed for sale while low quay. Hand, is the process of determining the quality of the crops based on standards set by the industry. Sorting and grading help to ensure that only high-quality crops are packed for sale while low quay. Itty ones are used for animal feed or compost. 3. Proper transportation Transportation is another critical aspect of minimizing post-harvest losses. If the crops are not transported properly, they will incur damages that can lead to spoilage and loss of quality. Proper H. Milling and packaging are crucial during transportation to keep the crops fresh and prevent damage. Using temperature-controlled vehicles, such as refrigerated trucks, can help preserve the quality of. Milling and packaging are crucial during transportation to keep the crops fresh and prevent damage. Using temperature-controlled vehicles, such as refrigerated trucks, can help preserve the quality of. Perishable crops during long-distance transportation. 4. Appropriate storage. Storing crops in the right conditions is also essential to minimize post-harvest losses. Different crops require different storage conditions. For instance, fruits and vegetables require lower storage. Temperatures to prevent spoilage and extend their shelf life. Moisture content is another important factor. Excess moisture in storage can promote the growth of bacteria, fungi, and mold, leading to Temperatures to prevent spoilage and extend their shelf life. Moisture content is another important factor. Excess moisture in storage can promote the growth of bacteria, fungi, and mold, leading to Spoilage and significant losses. Farmers should use appropriate storage technologies such as refrigeration, dehydration, and hermetic storage to preserve the crops. 5. Pest Management Insects and rodents are a major cause of post-harvest losses. These pests can destroy large quantities of crops within a short time. Farmers need to use appropriate pest management techniques to cont. Oh, the infestation. Integrated Pest Management, IPM, is an effective approach that combines various techniques such as biological control, cultural control, and chemical control to manage pests. Farm. All the infestation. Integrated Pest Management, IPM, is an effective approach that combines various techniques such as biological control, cultural control, and chemical control to manage pests. Farm. RS should also observe good hygiene practices when handling the crops to avoid attracting pests. 6. Value Addition Value addition is a strategy that can help farmers reduce post-harvest losses and increase their income. Value addition involves processing the crops into products with higher value and longer shelf. Ife. For instance, cassava can be processed into flour or chips. Mangoes can be transformed into juice, jams, and dried fruits. These processed products can fetch higher prices in the market, and the Ife. For instance, cassava can be processed into flour or chips. Mangoes can be transformed into juice, jams, and dried fruits. These processed products can fetch higher prices in the market, and the Our longer shelf life also reduces the risk of post-harvest losses. 7. Adequate Market Access Access to markets is crucial in minimizing post-harvest losses. Poor market access can lead to a situation where farmers have to sell their crops at low prices or even dispose of them. Farmers can en. Ants their market access by organizing themselves into groups or cooperatives to increase their bargaining power, creating partnerships with buyers, or using e-commerce platforms to sell their produce. 
ants their market access by organizing themselves into groups or cooperatives to increase their bargaining power, creating partnerships with buyers, or using e-commerce platforms to sell their produce. S. 8. Farmer Education Finally, farmer education is essential in minimizing post-harvest losses. Farmers need to be trained on best practices in post-harvest management. They should learn how to identify the right maturity level for their crops, sorting and grading, proper transport, and appropriate storage processes. Farmers should also be taught the importance of good hygiene practices to avoid contamination and pest. Level for their crops, sorting and grading, proper transport, and appropriate storage processes. Farmers should also be taught the importance of good hygiene practices to avoid contamination and pest. Infestation 9. Use of advanced technologies Technology plays a significant role in reducing post-harvest losses. Advanced technologies such as remote sensing, quality testing, automated sorting, and packaging machinery can improve the efficient. Why of post-harvest management? Remote sensing helps farmers determine the maturity level of the crops accurately. Quality testing technologies such as near-infrared spectroscopy, NIRS, can detect qual. Why of post-harvest management? Remote sensing helps farmers determine the maturity level of the crops accurately. Quality testing technologies such as near-infrared spectroscopy, NIRS, can detect qual. Time markers in crops and help sort them accordingly. Automated sorting and packaging machinery help reduce the time taken to sort and grade crops, reducing labor costs and minimizing human error. 10. Collaboration and Partnerships Collaboration and partnerships between different stakeholders in the agricultural value chain can help reduce post-harvest losses. Farmers, traders, processors, transporters, and retailers need to well. K together to ensure that crops are handled appropriately. Traders and processors can provide market information to farmers to help them know what crops are in demand and at what price. Retailers can K together to ensure that crops are handled appropriately. Traders and processors can provide market information to farmers to help them know what crops are in demand and at what price. Retailers can Offer feedback on the quality of crops delivered to them, helping farmers improve their post-harvest management practices. 11. Climate Smart Agriculture Climate change is a significant challenge facing agriculture, particularly in tropical regions. Extreme weather events such as floods, droughts, and hurricanes can lead to crop losses. Climate Smart Agriculture SA, is a strategy that focuses on adapting to climate change while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. SA involves practices such as conservation agriculture, agroforestry, and water har. Agriculture SA is a strategy that focuses on adapting to climate change while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. SA involves practices such as conservation agriculture, agroforestry, and water har.